There you are, on stage, singing beautifully, when all of a sudden, I don't want you to leave, will you hold my hand? Oh, won't you stay with me? Well, the reason that that note has such a dramatic change where you're walking up, where all of a sudden your voice completely changes is because that note is in your bridge or your passaggio. Now, what actually is a bridge or passage or passaggio, whatever you wanna call it, and how can you sing through it better today? The passaggio, passage, or bridge, whatever you wanna call it, is the zone or area in your voice where you're transitioning between the chest voice and the head voice, or the area in the bottom of your voice to the area at the top part of your voice. Uh, some people are now calling this a switch from mode one to mode two. And the passaggio is in an especially difficult place for beginners to sing because the odds are very good that through that area, you're going to have a vocal break. By that, I mean you're singing, ah, and a vocal break, in case you can't tell from my terrible demonstration, is a sudden change in the quality or the tone or the timbre of your singing voice, uh, typically when you're singing from low to high or from high to low. And the reason that your voice is breaking is because you're going through that area of passage, going through that bridge. And typically that's where you're going to experience your vocal break. Now, I just wanna say right off the bat, that if you do have a vocal break going from low to high in your voice and high to low in your voice, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing anything wrong. It actually can mean that you're doing something right. After all, if you don't have a vocal break, it means one of three things are happening. Number one, you're just singing with chest voice and you're not actually transitioning up to head voice, which would be like, ah. Number two, you're singing so lightly in the bottom part of your voice that effectively there's no difference between your head and your chest voice, like, Or three, that you're mixing it so well, you're mixing the chest voice and the head voice together so well that you just don't have a break at all. And this is probably the least likely scenario why you wouldn't have a vocal break. And actually, if you do have a vocal break through your passage, the, again, that means that you're doing something right. It means that you're actually transitioning from the bottom to the top part of your voice or vice versa. Obviously that passage is only a problem if there's a break in there that's so pronounced that everybody hears it. So you're going, uh, uh. Again, we just don't want the break so pronounced that everybody hears it. Now vocal breaks can happen when you're speaking or when you're singing, but it always happens when you're making sound. The sound in this case is created by the vocal cords that are coming together and resisting the air from your lungs. They do that by vibrating against that air and those vibra vibrations are what's creating the sound of your singing voice. So what actually causes that vocal break? And by the way, how many bridges and passages or passaggi are there actually? We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Well, in most classical literature, you're gonna find that there's a reference to a primo passaggio and a secondo passaggio. And in SLS, in most contemporary vocal training, there's going to be uh, theoretically bridges that keep repeating and repeating over and over. For guys, those bridges tend to start around this E4, F4, F sharp four, and G4. And then the second bridge starts around the A4, B flat four, B4, and C5. And then theoretically, the bridges would keep repeating again at the E5 above that, F5, F sharp five, and G5 for your third bridge, and on and on and on. Uh, females would typically have their first bridge in more contemporary vocal training, starting around this A4, B flat four, B4, and C5. And then their second bridge would start at, you guessed it, around the E5, F5, F sharp five, and G5. It's important to point out that in most of this modern vocal training, the idea of these bridges repeating over and over extend as far as you have a vocal range. Now, I'm gonna tell you my true opinion on that in just a second, but before we do that, let's actually talk about what's creating those voice changes as you're singing through your passaggio. Most modern vocal science points to two possible factors creating that bridge or that passaggio area. Uh, the first being physiological changes. Uh, typically, in the bottom part of your voice, we have thick vocal cords creating that kind of 
ah, really brassy kind of chest voice sound. And kind of like this hair tie, if the cords are not stretched and they're just thick, then if I flick them, they would make a really, really low sound. The same is true of the vocal cords. And in order to sing higher notes, the vocal cords have to actually thin out and stretch in order to create those higher vibrations. Uh, again, back to this hair tie, if I start to stretch it and the cords actually get a little bit thinner, then the pitch that I'm creating when I flick them gets higher. So this zona di passaggio, this bridge, this area in physiological terms happens when you're switching from the thick vocal cords of chest voice up to the thinner vocal cords of head voice. And in the last 20 to 30 years, we're also starting to understand that there's also acoustic changes that tend to take place in the voice when singing from low to high. Now, this isn't a class on formants. I mean, after all, you just want to learn how to sing through your bridge better. But it is important to understand that there are acoustics going on in your voice, by which I mean every note that you sing has lots and lots of musical information built into it, which we call harmonics. Those harmonics are actually going to interact with the areas in our voice that we have a lot of natural resonance, which in singing we call formants. Now, in my own personal experience of teaching over a thousand students, I can say that I have noticed that there seems to be a primary bridging event that seems to happen for guys around the D4 to an E4. And there also seems to be a primary kind of bridging or passaggio event that happens for most women around G4 to A4. And once you get up over that area, typically we can see some similar things like the vowel starts to open a little bit more and intensity may start to increase. And I should also point out that the area where you're going to start bridging also depends on the vowel, the intensity, the tone, and a bunch of other factors. But in order to help you sing through that bridge, we need to vastly overgeneralize and say that there are basically two main ways that you can react to that bridge in your voice. The first way is what I demonstrated earlier, where people just basically try to push their chest voice up through that passage. And that would sound kind of like this. The second reaction would be flipping or singing too lightly, kind of an ah. And the objective of mixed voice training, like uh, Ramsey Voice Studio and what I teach here, is to teach you to kind of blend and find the perfect balance between kind of the chest voice and the head voice as you're singing through there. So rather than having that big break or a lot of strain, you just ah. you're able to make it sound really, really fluid and that there's no breaks or strain involved. Now, before we get into the exercises themselves, there's a couple of best practices that are going to go a long way in helping you to sing through your vocal break or through your bridge or your passaggio. The first one is that we want to keep the larynx stable. And what I mean by keeping the larynx stable is very often beginning singers will follow the pitch with their larynx. They start singing higher notes and the uh, larynx goes right up. Like an, uh, so it's very important that we keep that larynx resting. So rather than having that, uh, we have an, uh, where my larynx stays right in the middle. The second best practice to sing through your vocal break is to keep the volume even. And by the way, I'm gonna encourage you to do all of these when we get into the exercises here in just a second. We wanna keep the volume stable. That means that you're not yelling and you're also not completely backing off. So rather than ah, and increasing the volume as I go up, or ah, and backing off, we wanna keep that even dynamic, that Ah. The third best practice for these exercises in singing through your bridge is to keep your mouth position stable. And specifically, we don't want to let the mouth go too wide. Ah, ah, ah. If the mouth goes too wide, oftentimes the larynx will go up. And while that will help a little bit in the short term, and you may find, oh wow, I can, ah, I can sing up there super easily, it's not actually going to help you improve over time because you're basically just straining everything to get into it. So it's very important that you keep that jaw position very stable rather than going wide. You can maybe consider dropping the jaw slightly if you need to, like, ah, no. Ah. And your final best practice for singing with these exercises 
is that you basically want to allow the voice to shift. I know that this seems kind of hippie and kind of philosophical, but so often people really resist that bridge shift. They're really resisting having that passaggio change uh, and having that change in their voice. And as a result of resisting that, they try to push or they strain or they break completely. And what I want to encourage you to do is make friends with the bridge, make friends with your passaggio. Um, because if you're coming at it from a position of, oh, I hate this, this is something I don't like, then you're probably going to react against it. But if you allow your voice to shift, you're gonna feel that it becomes so much easier than, oh, oh no, something's gonna happen. Instead, we just want that, my, my voice just transitioned. By the way, I'm always starting on a G3 there and going up through my first passage there. Now, let's get into the exercises. So the first exercise that I'm gonna show you, obviously, if you've been following my channel, you've heard it before. It's the octave and a half lip trill where we're singing in three, four time, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can uh, pause the video, rewatch it as many times as you want to get a handle on that. But we're basically going to just take our two fingers, place them in the middle of our cheeks, let the lips flop together, and just sing that just hold it on one note first. Then we're gonna do that on the octave and a half. And uh, you'll have to forgive me, I have to play the piano, so I'm gonna take my fingers off. So it's gonna be like a Guys, join me here. One more. Now, ladies, let's do the same thing right here. Keep going. Great job. Now, why is this exercise working really well? Well, because with these semi-occlusive exercises like the lip trill, basically the sound waves that are in your throat are being kept, some of them are being kept in there rather than all of them leaving your mouth and just kind of going out into the world. Actually, some of them are kind of staying in there, which is kind of helping prop them uh, up and helping support your vocal cords to close more evenly. So anytime we introduce some sort of a closure in the vocal tract, usually we're getting some of the sound waves to help the vocal cords close better. You may find that if you go from the lip trill straight to something like an ah, rather than a and you go right to an ah, you may find that your break comes right back. And this is totally normal. And it's usually a process of working with these exercises for a time to convince your voice that it's safe to go through there. The second exercise to sing through your break is, uh, again, another semi-occlusive. So in this case, we're gonna do an mm, like you're saying the word rung. Go ahead and say that with me, rung. Now hold that NG, make sure that it's not ruh, uh, make sure it's rung, and hold it on one note. Then we're gonna go back to our trusty octave and a half scale for guys down here, and we're gonna sing that on mm, like rung, so. Let's do it here. One more. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for ladies, starting right here on a G3 and going up through and over your first passage, like this. more ladies. And again, this exercise is so good at helping you sing through that passage because basically that mm is trapping some of the sound waves in the back of your throat, which is helping the vocal cords close. It's in a phenomenon that we call reactance or inertive reactance, or sometimes I call it nerdy reactance because it sounds so nerdy, but hey, self-professed vocal nerd here. In our third exercise to sing through the bridge, we're gonna open things up now, and we're gonna go on a bratty nay, nay, nay. 
And uh, if you've been following my channel, you've probably seen this bratty neigh before. The reason that this one works so well is that bratty sound is really good at keeping the vocal cords closing evenly from the bottom to the top. Additionally, that bratty sound is gonna raise the larynx, which thins out the cords, making it easier to get at to your head voice. So let's try this. So we're gonna sing Guys, join me here. Let's do one more. Great job, guys. Ladies, let's do the same thing right here. Awesome job. Now we're gonna finish up with one more exercise for singing through the bridge or the passaggio that is going a little bit more normal. You've noticed that the and the and the nay 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 are all kind of weird and kind of gross sounding and you probably wouldn't wanna sing them live. Well, I wanna give you one exercise that's a little bit more quote unquote finished, a little bit more like a finished product or what you would sing in the studio or on stage. And in this case, we're gonna do that on no, like we're saying the word note. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! So we're gonna go on an octave repeat arpeggio where we're walking up, repeating, and coming back down. So it's up three, repeat four, and back down three. So we're gonna sing that on no, no, no for guys starting right here on F sharp four. Well, actually starting on the bottom on F sharp three, going up to an F sharp four. So a no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Great job. Now we're gonna do the same thing for ladies, starting right here on a B flat. So a no, 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 no. No, 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 no. One more. No, 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 no. Now always remember with all of these exercises to sing through your vocal break, we want to make friends with it. We want to be happy with our vocal break, even if it doesn't want to be friends with us. Uh, you're always going to get further by trying to go gently and transition and allow your voice to make the changes that it naturally wants to than to force it to do anything. And I'm sure these exercises are going to help you get there. Guys, if you're looking for more fantastic exercises to help you get through your bridge, definitely check out my complete singing course, Master Your Voice, the only singing program out there featuring personal feedback from a real vocal coach, plus proven exercises like this to help you sing through your bridge. Links in the description.